My name is Jen Bokerman and I'm here to um, present on the school-wide enrichment model. So let's first talk about what the school-wide enrichment model is, otherwise known as SEM. It's actually a detailed blueprint for total school improvement that allows each school total flexibility to develop its own unique programs based on its local resources, student demographics, and school dynamics, as well as any faculty strengths and creativity. It really is a flexible plan to implement. A little history of FCM is it was developed in the mid-1970s and was implemented as a gifted and talented program in some school districts in Connecticut. Since then, it's been field tested in several districts and proved to be quite popular, where requests from all over the country to visit these schools using this model actually drove um, Venzuli to publish his book on the enrichment triad model. One of the main components of this model is called the three rings of giftedness, um, above average ability, creativity, and task commitment. According to Renzulli, these three traits combine and interact with each other to form creative accomplishment or gifted behaviors. According to this theory, students who exhibit or have the potential to exhibit sufficient levels of these traits require distinct opportunities and challenges above and beyond that what's offered in the regular classroom. The enrichment triad model is also made up of three different types of activities. The first is general exploratory activities. Um, and in this, schools use this approach as an enrichment team of parents, teachers, and students. And they often organize experiences by contacting speakers, arranging mini courses, conducting overviews, um, demonstrations, all of these are provided to a general group of students or students who have already expressed an interest in the topic area. But these are activities that are not ordinarily in the regular curriculum. Type 2 is more group training activities. And as you can see, it includes materials and methods designed to promote the development of thinking and feeling processes. So some type two enrichment is general and usually provided to a group of students in their classroom or enrichment programs. But these include more of the how-to or life lesson type of skills. Lastly, we have the individual or small group. These type three enrichment activities involve students who be, have become interested in pursuing a self-selected area and are willing to commit the time necessary for advanced content acquisition and process training in which they assume the role of the first-hand inquirer. There are three main goals of SEM. The first is to maintain and expand a continuum of the special service that challenge any student and any aspects of school, both school and extracurricular programs. To infuse into the general education program a broad range of activities for high-end learning that will challenge all students to perform at advanced levels and allow teachers to determine which students should be given extended opportunities, resources, and encouragement in particular areas. And the third is to preserve and protect the positions of gifted ed education specialists and any other specialized personnel necessary for carrying out these goals. <clears throat> these three major goals combined are designed to challenge and meet the needs of high potential, high ability, and gifted students, and at the same time, provide challenging learning experience for all students. There's three, this is the school-wide enrichment model broken down. As you can see, there's many parts to it in terms of what sort of resources they have and their ideology. So I'm gonna break down the school structures. Um, the first is the regular curriculum, and this consists of everything that is part of the already predetermined goals, the schedules, learning outcomes, and delivery systems. It could be traditional classroom, innovated, or in the process of transitioning out of the traditional classroom. But what I found was a major component of this model had to do with enrichment clusters. So they're actually a non-graded group of students who sh just share a common interest and who become together during specially designed time blocks during the school to work with an adult who shares their interests and who has some degree of advanced knowledge and expertise in this area. So with this clusters, the students complete an interest inventory developed to assess what their interests are, and then an enrichment teams tally all the major families of interest, and then they figure out what most of their students um, would be interested in. They 
could be creative, writing, drawing, sculpting, archaeology, and many other topics. And then the training is actually provided to the facilitators who agree to offer these clusters and be in charge of them. And then a brochure is handed out and students and parents are allowed to pick based on their student interests and select where they would like further enrichment. Lastly is the school structure, which is a continuum of special services. So it's a challenge our most academic talented young people who are capable of working at the highest level. So this involves setting up and promoting student, faculty, and parental involvement in special programs, um, where another type of direct assistance consists of arranging out-of-school involvement for individual students in summer programs, on-campus courses, special schools, theater groups, scientific expeditions, apprenticeships at places where there is going to be truly advanced level learning opportunities available for these students. So this is a picture that I found that talks about the integrated continuum of special services and I thought it was quite appropriate because it shows both elementary, middle, and high school. Um, this provides a graphic overview and the arrow on the left hand side of the figure, um, which is the inputs, is intended to show the broad range of abilities, interests, and learning styles that exist in any of the population. So even in the highly targeted groups like advanced math, there's always a range of abilities. And the arrow on the right hand side is the output is intended to illustrate the range of performances and modes of expression that will result from this differentiated learning experience. So when we consider this range of performances, we really should take into account um, everything that a student has to offer. And then the center represents many of our already organizational methods for delivering services to these students. Um, an important consideration is that any and all services provided are integrated or interconnected so that it's not just one experience. Um, what I found was the newest component of SEM was actually um, due to technology being um, advanced is Renzuli Learning. It's actually an interactive online program that aids in the implementation of SEM by actually having students take a survey and then it matches their student interests, style, learning style, and a vast amount of data. And so students can use this technology to explore, discover, learn, and create. Um, so this is the profiler, and it's an interactive assessment that identifies everything that a student would want. And then the system actually assesses these into 13 major categories, including performing arts, writing, journalism, math, history, fine arts, science, athletics, sports, photography, social action, business, technology, literature, and foreign language. So this is a really all-inclusive database, but schools would have to pay for this. Um, but what I thought was really cool was the database had so many different categories, like virtual field trips, real field trips. It just was an all-inclusive resource for schools and teachers if they were interested in implementing this program. So let's talk about the application. Um, what's really nice is SEM kind of strikes a balance between traditional classroom learning, but then also takes on a more hands-on approach into the 21st century learning with skills and pre productivity. So some of the strengths is what I like about this program, it, it can truly be applied to any school, any grade level, and any subject. Um, its strengths is it's totally flexible in that any teacher could find a group of students who are interested in something and have that be their learning for that year. Um, there, it truly challenges students, it engages students, and they are actually passionate about what they're going to learn. The weakness is that it takes a lot of large planning. It takes a whole school to buy in. It really is supposed to be a school-wide model and you are supposed to offer a variety of clusters so that every student feels like they are learning something that they want to learn. And then it does take some time to find some experts um, through the community, through your faculty. Um, it could be very complex and could require a lot of planning. Um, I found this graphic and this I thought was perfect if a school wanted to actually implement these clusters into um, their curriculum. Uh, I, they need to assess the students and staff and see like where they're at and what they would like to learn. They should set up a wall chart, create a schedule, then locate people to facilitate these clusters. But the biggest thing is they need to provide resources for these clusters. 
here are three books that I found as well as some websites to help you if you're interested in this further. But I really think that this can be applied to any subject, any grade level, any school, anywhere, which is why I chose it. Thanks for listening.